Housing athletes, trainers, and officials together sounds like a great idea, but add to that situation a lack of press, a lot of stress, and different personalities, and you have a recipe for craziness. We'll tell you some of the most wild things to have gone down at the Olympic Village. But first, be sure to hit subscribe for more videos from the taco. Now let's take a look at the Olympic Village mayhem. The Breakdown Okay, so you have a ton of fit and athletic people trapped together in a house. Anyone who's seen a reality show knows that means hookups are imminent. Heck, even the Olympic organizers know what's going on. They make protection available at the reception desks of medical centers in the building, free for anyone to grab. And grab they do. At the London Olympic Village in 2012, visitors took approximately 150,000 of the prophylactics. We can't say if all of them were used, but even if half got thrown away, that's still a huge number. According to various athletes, the athletes from the United States are the most likely to be found flirting. But who's the most receptive? Apparently swimmers, track athletes, beach volleyball players, and gymnasts are the most likely to engage in full contact sports off the field, while people participating in rowing and equestrian events would rather keep their heads in the game. According to 12-time Olympic medalist Ryan Lochte, about 70-75% to 75 of Olympians hook up at some point during the event. They even use hookup apps such as Tinder while inside the Olympic Village. Snowboarder Jamie Anderson confessed that she and her fellow athletes used it as a quick and easy way to flirt with their competitors. She also added that at some point it actually became a distraction from the Olympics themselves. Secret Party Pad Midway through the 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney, Australia, Josh Lakatos was finished with his event. He went to the Olympics to compete in target shooting, but was reluctant to leave the Olympic Village. From experience, he knew that the partying had only just begun and he didn't want to miss out. So he broke into an empty dwelling and simply decided to stay there in order to continue partying. Word spread quickly that there was a nearly vacant part of the property that could now be accessed thanks to Lakatos. You see, almost everyone staying at the Olympic Village is stuck with a roommate, which can put a cramp in your dating style, as most of us know. While Licatos claimed a suite for himself, he was happy to let other people stop by and, um, use the other rooms for a brief period of time. They started calling it Shooter's House, in honor of Licatos, and would regularly bring in duffel bags full of condoms from medical units. Shot putter John Godina claims that some people only hook up after their event is over or make it a part of their pre-event routine. He's used to the ebb and flow of Olympic Village culture, but claims he's never seen anything as wild as what went down at Shooter's house. London But according to soccer star Hope Solo, the 2012 London Olympic Village might have given Shooter's house a run for its money. Pretty much the second the athletes arrived on the scene, they managed to crash a popular gay dating app due to sheer volume. It was down for a full 24 hours, and its founder even issued an apology to users because of the incident. Solo claims that many people chose not to even attempt to be discreet while hooking up in London. They'd pick a spot between buildings or even right out in the open on the grass and get busy. She said, says that going to the Olympics is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, it's just one that some people have off the field. Hilariously enough, the unofficial sponsor of the event was Jurex, who supplied condoms for the event. Unlike other sponsors, they didn't have to pay the $1.6 billion fee, but then again, they couldn't exactly cash in on their endorsement. In a statement from the company, a Jurex rep claimed that they couldn't say anything about the situation due to restrictions by the organizational committee. However, we are guessing that after the epic Olympic village, their brand recognition was at an all-time high. Rio But it isn't all fun and games at Olympic villages. Some Sometimes fights and arguments occur, even between people who are supposed to be teammates. At the 2016 Olympics in Rio, the Brazilian synchronized diving team was torn apart by scandal. At the time, 20-year-old Ingrid Oliveira was sharing a room with her 17-year-old roommate, Giovanna Pedroso. The night before their event might have been a good time to turn in early and get a good night's rest, but not for Oliveira. She decided it would be the perfect time to hook up with canoeist Pedro Goncalves and that the perfect place would be in her bedroom. She banished Pedroso from her own room in order to do the deed, and Pedroso was less than thrilled. She blasted her former roomie online, claiming that she had been working towards the Olympics for four long years. After putting in all that work, getting exiled so her roommate could hook up felt like the ultimate disrespect. Apparently, the pair had been experienced 
experiencing a rocky relationship, but this was the last straw for Pedroso. She refused to compete with Oliveira ever again and decided to focus on her individual skills instead. Beijing Hope Solo may have been the goalkeeper during the 2018 Olympics in Beijing, but she reportedly scored behind the scenes. Bringing regular citizens back to Olympic Village is a major violation of the rules, but Solo thought it was worth the risk. She confessed to ESPN that she managed to sneak a celebrity back to her room for what she's termed her Olympic secret. You're probably eager to know who that celebrity is, but sadly, Solo still won't reveal their identity, so all we have is speculation. Although she did confess that after their victory, she and her teammates went out to party with actor Vince Vaughn. Going out drinking and dancing is a common way to celebrate a win, and this night was no exception. By the time they returned to Olympic Village, the team was in rough shape. They quickly changed back into their stadium coats and got ready for a television interview. Solo admits that they were all still intoxicated when they appeared on live television. She even referred to the event as the World Cup and not the Olympic Final due to her inebriation. Some teams do try to set out codes of conduct, but Solo says they're routinely broken. Athletes might have a curfew or be given a chaperone, but Solo says where there's a will, there's a way. McDonald's Most of us probably don't think we have much in common with Olympic athletes. After all, they're at peak physical condition and compete masterfully in a wide range of sports. But it turns out we do have one thing in common. We can't resist a Big Mac. A McDonald's might sound like a strange addition to an Olympic village, but there was one at the Rio Olympics. And athletes weren't just stopping by for a quick and convenient bite. It was so constantly packed that you could expect to wait a minimum of half an hour if you just had to have your McFlurry. Badminton player Sawan Sarasing may not have taken home the gold medal, but he did end up at the Golden Arches. After months of eating clean, he decided to take a break and relax with a veritable feast. And not all athletes wait until after their event. Swimmer Kevin Cordes says that he ate a McDonald's burger before his race where he won a gold medal. We're not saying there's a connection there, but who knows? Alexander Radovic, a member of Montenegro's water polo team, explained that getting McDonald's helped to break up the monotony of food in the Olympic Village. While many athletes will happily talk about their wild adventures at the Olympic Village, most athletes refuse to talk about the McDonald's they scarf down. Trading One beloved tradition at Olympic Villages is endearingly sweet in its simplicity. Apparently, when they aren't swapping numbers, athletes take great joy in swapping their personal possessions, including clothing. Hockey player Julie Chu says that their suitcases are considered valuable currency, and people will set up shop to trade clothes with each other. It's interesting to see all of the different swag from different places, not to mention watching people struggle to overcome the language barriers enough to make commerce possible. Although like most things at the Olympic Village, this does sometimes get out of hand. Skier Carrie Scheinberg claims that a pair of German bobsledders once tried to trade in their gold medals for some one-on-one -on -one time. Needless to say, she hastily turned down that trade deal. For above-the-board trades, the dining hall tends to be the activity hub. Athletes will essentially set up shop with their clothing and see what everyone has to trade. Aside from all the salacious scandals, there is a lot of PG bonding that occurs between athletes behind the scenes. Many athletes report feeling sad and nostalgic when it's time to leave after the games are over. Cohabitating Some time between the partying, training, and competing, athletes manage to have some good old-fashioned fun via passive-aggressive notes. In Rio, the Great Britain men's cycling team earned a reputation for being a bunch of party animals. Their female colleagues apparently weren't on board and left them a friendly reminder while they were out competing. The note congratulated the men, but asked them to keep moving down the hall to their own rooms instead of interrupting them with their drunken escapades. It mentioned that the gentleman had a habit of accidentally, or accidentally, walking into the women's room. The ladies even included a helpful arrow to point the men in the right direction to their own room. For their part, the men laughed off the note. Owain Duell shared a picture of the note on social media and said, hats off to the girls, they know us too well. Even more humorous signs were found in the restrooms at the Olympics in Rio. Athletes were amused when the signs informed them that they weren't allowed to go fishing while in the bathroom. Sochi. So saying that the Sochi Olympic Park was a disaster is putting it pretty mildly. It's where they set up the Olympic Village for the 2014 Winter Olympics in Russia, and it was the laughingstock of the internet for a while. For instance, just look at this shower head all wired up and ready to go. Not to mention the fact that they had decided to skimp on barriers in the bathrooms. Hey, that's some high quality team bonding right there. We understand that it's frustrating when someone blocks the drain from throwing paper in it, but we are also pretty sure that isn't just one of 
of those problems that goes away if you ignore it. Overall, the rooms were in complete shambles. Since these are the same athletes who will stand in line for half an hour to get some McDonald's, we're guessing they weren't even expecting luxury accommodations. Oh, and there's also the small matter of the deputy prime minister claiming that he was filming people in the showers. Yes, Dmitry Kozak claims that reports making fun of the accommodations are exaggerated. Not surprisingly, he took back this statement and claimed that he was talking about surveillance of the property in general and not in the bathrooms. Dogs Nothing makes Olympic athletes feel more at home than packs of stray dogs roaming around. For some reason, most people reacted badly when Russia announced that they would be eliminating tons of stray dogs to get ready for the games. As a result, many people stepped up to adopt the dogs that badly needed homes. Skier Gus Kenworthy adopted five dogs that he found while visiting Sochi. Snowboarder Lindsay Jacob Ellis brought home a single pup instead of a pack, and hockey player David Fax and his wife worked to find homes for other dogs. And then we have loser Kate Hansen, who posted a video of a wolf roaming the hallway of Olympic Village. Sochi was such a disaster that people were ready to believe that there were actual wolves roaming the halls. However, it turns out it was all a prank orchestrated by none other than Jimmy Kimmel. It was all filmed by Kimmel's crew and merely uploaded to social media by Hansen. However, like a true YouTube prankster, Hansen insisted that it was just a prank and it was worth it in the end. We are sorry to have to remind you that if you're not an Olympic athlete or one of their trainers, you're not allowed in an Olympic village. So get your entertainment from the taco.